My first official video interview is up. It is uploaded on YouTube. Fatty is Shade. Head over, subscribe, like, share. Head over, subscribe, like, and share on YouTube. My first official video interview. Please go now. Peace. Gentlemen, I am Thaddeus Shade. You're listening to Seasonable Clout. And applause, please. Thank you. <laughs> the crowd is so kind to me. Yes, they are. Seasonable Clout, Thaddeus Shade, November 8th, 2023. You know, I got to say the date sometimes because I like to think that maybe in the future, Deep down in the future, somebody will find this and they will listen to me and they'll be like, you know what? 2023 was this shit. Not really, but it, you know, they might think that because it might be like Mad Max type and looking scenery and everybody's like half naked with some weird pain in their face and spikes in the back of the neck and Everybody likes to eat snake. I don't know what that's about, but I'm assuming snake is the delicacy of the Mad Max era that's sure to come in 40 years from now. But I like to make sure that they know that 2023 was pretty decent. It's like a a beautiful morning, you know, we're coming up, we're in the holiday season. You know, I'm not going to sugarcoat that. I'm not going to say that we coming up on the holiday season because as soon as November 1st hit, it was the holiday season. It was the holiday season and we in it right now. Oh, wait a minute. One more time for seasonable clout. Oh, stop. (laughs) They're just so active today. Anyway, so let's get into the episode. Let's talk about last week's work. Damn, I was so special last week. I did an amazing amount of work last week. Fancy myself a hard worker. I did an episode last week talking about Instagram pages and pages being reported falsely and getting taken down. And you could do these things, these steps to potentially save your page, get it back, things like that. And there's some more things you could do. If you listen to the episode, you know, I got some more tips, trips, wait, tips, tricks, bullets that I could put into the clip and then shoot your way. You know what I'm saying? If you ever have some problems, you just got to DM me and, you know, I can help you out. But I did talk about that and some of the safeguard things you could do to kind of protect your page, you know, um, and, uh, you know, some some of the folks that lost their pages, some of the women that lost their pages, they got them back. You know, I, I'm happy for them. You know, I, I'm just in a round of applause moody. <laughs> Outside of the uh, Instagram post and talking about reported pages, I finally... I finally, ladies and gentlemen, I finally did an interview. Now, I've done interviews on my podcast before. You can scroll back, scroll back to a nigga's back days, and you can see that this nigga, I said it, this nigga had did interviews but I never have done a video interview. And I did one last week. I pulled it off. I was hungry for it. I've been hungry for this. I told you what I wanted to do. I got the hard work. I wanted to get the hard work done. I wanted to game. I wanted to 
to record myself game and I wanted to get video interviews. Now, this face is for my mother to love. It's not a face for y'all to cherish. That's just the truth. I'm not going to stand up there and say, you know what? I'm really looking to do a CK ad. You know, let me see what's out there and let me go put my face on a CK ad. That's not what I'm here for. But I could get a role getting my ass whooped by Daredevil on a Disney channel because I got that type of face. You know what I'm saying? I got that type of face. I ain't saying I got the CK model face. I got the, come here, and somebody whooped my ass in a TV show face. That's the face that I have. So you won't see my face. You'll see the people that I'm interviewing. You see their face. It's, it's, it's shot like that. Now, I don't want to do where you see me and the person and you focused on looking at me and saying, I don't really want to see his face. If he could do anything to blur his face out while he talking to that to, to the reporter or he talking to the to the person that create clothes, I hope that he could blur his face out. That's what, that's what I want. That's what I really need. I don't want to watch this shit because he's got his face and that's why I'm not going to do the So, I did my very first one. And let me tell you, before I even tell you about who I interviewed, the work was legit you people that are rich talking rich now i got a couple of ducats you know what i'm saying i got a parking ticket i could pay it i do you know i need to you know you know i do something a little fucked up with the law i could probably pay my lawyer friend you're the probably in that i got a few duckies but I don't have money where I can do this. I produce my own shit. I write all my own stuff down. Okay, listen. That last part, that last part was a little bit of a lie. I've been using chat GPT to kind of help me with like making my stuff look clean. Now, I got my own ideas. Now, listen, I do my own ideas, but I do use chat GPT to make it look good. And they helped me with the breakdown. You know what I'm saying? Now, that's just the truth. Now, I don't want want y'all, you know, judging me. Let me sip of this coffee real quick. Hold on. You know what it is about the coffee? (laughs) So, I do. I did do the interview. And I don't have... I do all this myself. I don't do, you know, I don't have nobody help me produce the show or when I did the interview, I did, I had to cut the video up myself. I'm cutting this thing up myself. I'm editing this thing myself. I created my overlay myself. Do you know how much work that shit was? Man, do you know how much work that shit was and I'm doing this from I'm doing this from my Mac and I'm sending it from my Mac to my phone and I'm doing more shit in my phone and I'm sending it to, to one app I use CapCut yeah I use CapCut and I pay for the Pro too I told you I got the duckies I ain't got big duckies but I got a little ducky I pay for the Pro you know what I'm saying so I send it to over to my phone and I'm in the CapCut in my phone after I just used the CapCut on my Mac I sent it from my Mac to my phone I use the cap cut in my phone. Then I send that video to InShot. That's another app on my phone. I'm doing shit with InShot, InShot, because I'm trying to get the audio because from here, because this audio, I get it, I have it mastered. You know what I'm saying? When I mix it, I get it mastered. And that audio sounds better. I'm trying to lay it down and I got to use multiple apps. I'm doing all this myself. Do you understand? I have no knowledge in this. This is not a skill set. Now, vocal wise, because I did music for a long time, quality of the vocals, quality of music, making sure I sound good, I have a skill set in that. Right? That's why I play around with I play around with the uh, the settings all the time. And I think I found my home in my settings, but I care about how I sound, how I, you hear me, am I compressing my vocals, am I EQing my vocals, you know what I'm saying, taking the noise out, I, I care about those things, I know those things, right, but I don't have that, that graphic work, that's not my skill set, 
editing videos, that's not my skill set, even though I have taken a interest in it. It is not my skill set. So I did this interview and I spent a lot of time slicing some things up, moving some things around. Now, I, I, I like to think that when I do the interviews, I'm trying to keep as much as possible outside of somebody saying, you, you know, hey, when I was younger, I used to find raccoons and I would I would kill them. Don't recommend nobody killing raccoons. But I'm saying I wouldn't let nobody get on here and say some shit like that because then you're probably a murderer secretly. But if they did, I would get in and I would cut it out. And I would then deliver it to you guys to make it seem like an upstanding human being, but they're really not because they just talked about killing raccoons, but you didn't know that because I cut it out. But most of the time, damn near 95% of the time, I'm going to keep the whole joint up in that motherfucker. And then so, I like to keep it real. I like to keep it real. You know what I'm saying? I don't like to do all that editing. I like to set that camera up, motherfucker. I like to tell that motherfucker, action. And I like for that motherfucker to be real. Have some fun. Put a smile on your face. So, I did it. Yes. I did it. 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 I got it done. You know what it feels like to get something done you really want to get done? That feeling is hard to come across. You know what I'm saying? To actually accomplish something that your brain is is like on fire for. To 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 jump in the mud with white curries on. I say curries because I, I you know what I'm saying? I I I buy curries. I got over 55 pairs of curries. I buy curries. So if I jump in some mud with some white curries on, you best believe I'm trying to get away from zombies. Or I'm trying to get to an end destination that's got a pot of gold at the end of that motherfucker. And that's what I'm saying when it comes to getting it done. I feel like as I continue doing this, there's a pot of gold. That's why I'm willing to jump in the mud with some white curries. So now to you, it could be some shell toe Adidas yuck. To you, it could be some Yeezys, some white Yeezys, double yuck. I am hating on the Yeezys, but I do own a pair. Shh. Man, you come right out of a comic book. Some of you, it might be J's. Now, listen, I do buy patent leather J's. The 11s, I do buy them. Okay? I don't rock them, but I do buy them. That's a weird thing, but I do. I do it. But to get to get the goal accomplished, ah, oh, it feels so good. It's like, uh, let me see, it's like... Oh, do you remember the the nice old lady that was the Oracle in the Matrix? She was a sweet lady. The very first one, even in the second one, she was sweet, even though she had to get a new body and stuff because of the Matrix, right? The first lady, when Neo walks in and she's baking cookies, she's just sweet and nice. And she gave Neo a cookie. That's how it feels. To accomplish a goal. It's just sweet. It's nice. It feels good at the end. You get to bite the cookie. And the cookie tastes good. It goes down well. You deserve the cookie because you put the work in, Shade. You deserve the cookie because you put the work in, Curl, at Walmart. Use the manager. I remember you. You didn't bag my stuff right. Sorry. That was, that was a bit much. I'm sorry, Curl. But next time, bag my shit right. That's just the real. When you go to bag Shade shit, You bag that shit, right? You don't single bag two cartons of oat milk. It's going to rip. And I'm going to have to experience that on the way to the car. I'm 6'3". I'm old. I don't need to bend down to pick up the cartons. I don't know where this shit went. Man, you come right out of a comic book. But... (laughs) I Instacart now. I don't even go to the store no more. I don't know what's been going on. I've been spending my money on Instacart. I'm a, my mom's got to be ashamed of me. She's looking down. She's like, this nigga. When did we get like this? Huh? But anyway, but I accomplished a goal. So I did the uh, interview and I interviewed Beatrice Martinez, dope 
awesome young lady who is at the Cronkite, who is at the Cronkite School, Arizona State University, Cronkite, studying or finishing being a sports reporter slash anchor. And this lady is good and she will go for and I am super proud of her. I don't know what happened. There was a mix of things happening there. But she uh, she was in an incredible first interview. You know, I got to get back into the groove. I haven't interviewed somebody in a very long time. So there's a groove you get back into, but it was dope. It was fun. She talked about, the, you know, talking to Michael Strahan and Hannah Montana is like her favorite show. Shame, I know. Talked about, mm, that was, I'm sorry. Listen, so I'm a realist. I'm keeping that in. That was a little bit of like a, a burp. I was trying to disguise it, but it was a little bit of burp. Just roll with me. Let's keep the action going. And action. So she also talked about, you know, one of the heads for Fox, Um, you know, having that, that love for her, you know, that appreciation, letting her know that she will be going far. That's, that's a magical moment. Can you imagine somebody high up, high, high, high up you and your field of work, somebody high up, say you, say you just starting out at the family dollar, right? And you believe in the family dollar business and you've been putting hours in hours working putting the whole the toxic Hawaiian punch up on the shelves just right so the people could see it and be like, you know what? I want that diabetes. You've been doing the work. The yellow bags are, is that Dollar General? It might be Dollar General. But you've been doing the work. And then let's just say the regional manager comes in. He's like, Shaniqua, you are fantastic. And you We'll be moving up soon. You're going to be a star in the family dollar world. You trust me, Shaniqua. Stay strong. Stay strong. Do the work. You're going far, Shaniqua. That is dope. And she talked about that. Not the family dollar, but the Fox. Big wig at Fox talking to her at the Super Bowl. And that's, that's, that's major. That's major. People should all, you know, you get that experience. People showing you love for what you do, how you do it, how you, how you you present yourself, how you talk. Hey, I'm fucking walking. You know, this comes from, but those type of things, you know, they could keep you pushing. They could keep you moving forward. So, you know, I always say, you know, keep working. I zombie through a lot of things, even though I'm not, I feel like I'm, I'm not making Olympic type speed running strides to where I'm trying to be. But if I zombie there, eventually I get there. I wake up, make a little progress, make a little bit more progress, make a little bit more progress, and I make a little bit more progress. And then look, I did my first episode, man. Video, video episode. It's on YouTube. Beatrice Martinez. We talked about a lot of things. 55 minutes worth of gabbing. She's a beautiful young lady. Go check out the interview. It's really dope. When you get to the YouTube, this is important. Damn it. When you get to the YouTube, you subscribe. Don't be like that. You subscribe. You like. If you feel generous enough, you share that interview. That interview is deep. It's funny. Okay, it's not really that deep. I don't like to do, I don't like to do crazy shit. I'm not a crazy person. This ain't gonna be some, you know, you know why I hate men. You know why I hate men. It ain't gonna be like that. You know why I hate women. It ain't gonna be like that. I like to have fun. I also like to know what people do, how they get in there. This is fun. This is dope. It's education. It's reading Rainbow. It's Sesame Street mixed with a little NYPD blue. 
Listen, for the kids that don't know what NYPD Blue is, for the young cats, go ahead and hit the Google button. Go ahead and hit the Google button. Because <laughs> I just put reading Rainbow. I just described my interviews as reading Rainbow, Sesame Street, and NYPD Blue. <laughs> Man, you come right out of a comic book. I do. I do. But the interview is dope. It's really dope. Uh, um, I'll be ordering. Uh, ordering. Hmm. I'll have another interview. Um, happening this Friday with a colleague of mine. Oh, JT Holmes will be in the building, and uh, we'll be talking about his clothing line, a uh, modern rock star. Yeah, we'll be talking about that. I am black, man. I know. Where does all this shit come from? I am blackity black. I am a, I am a nigga's nigga. You know, from the hood, from the ghetto. But I don't know where all this shit comes from. All this shit just be wired and it just pops out. And I'm just an honest Nelly. I'm just an honest Harry. An honest, an honest, I, I couldn't come up with something. But yeah, you know, you know what I mean. I just, on this podcast, I am me. When I am in public and I'm promoting, I'm in the club, I'm not all the way me. If you come up and talk to me, you get like a little pinch of salt of me, but not all the way me. All right? Just remember that. I am pure entertainment. In the world of imagination, you will see. And <laughs> but I'm pure entertainment, if you know me. If you don't, you like, man, that nigga probably murders people. He's a murderer. He stabs people, but I don't. All right, anyway, but yes, please, subscribe. Go check out the interview I did with Beatrice Martinez. It's fantastic. You'll love it. It's a good, it's a good, 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 fun interview. And I had a lot of fun doing that. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you go subscribe and you like. Now, moving on to something I really care about because... Man, you are in a court of law. There are a lot of people in here. We can't hear you. Your Honor, you're going to have to make them speak up. What does GTD stand for? Got the draws, okay? I just like to play that clip sometimes. It don't make no sense for me to play it, but I just have it in there because it's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite clips. And that episode is one of my favorite Martin episodes. So if you go look, you know, you watch Martin, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, go back. It was a 90s TV show for the young folks. And I be around young people all the time, man. I'm a decade or two. I'm a good two decades ahead of most of the people I party with. They, you know, whatever. Go check out mine. It's beautiful. Anyway, so I came up on some new coffee. All right. You know how I am about my coffee. And this won't take long because I got other stuff to get to. But in espresso. And y'all, and I've talked about this previous episodes. I'm a holiday guy. I don't fuck around. I'm a holiday guy. If I was, if I was a badass assassin and I was going to go assassinate somebody, my sniper, my gun, my sniping gun, my, you know, my sniping gun would like be wrapped in wrapping paper, Christmas wrapping paper. And I would, and I would assassinate somebody when a Santa hat on my um, a Santa hat on my head, you know, on my belly rifle on the shoulder humming. I wish you a Merry Christmas. Everybody gone. Happy holidays. I'm back on a plane in New York to go look at the Rockefeller Christmas tree. That's how much I am a fucking holiday guy. Now, moving to my coffee, espresso drop. The holiday pack your guy bought. For the people who give a fuck, listen, the holiday pack is legit. All right? They got a frosted caramel nut. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, wee. Frosted caramel nut. Imagine Gal Gadot 
coming up to you and say, you know what? I want to shampoo your hair and give you a scalp massage. That's what that frosted caramel nut tastes like. What? Amazing. Now, they also got a seasonal delight spices. Now, listen, now this isn't, this is, this, this actually is one of those ones that I think about the Folgers commercials. The best part of waking up is Folgers. I think that guy closed his eyes while he was saying that. I bet you he closed his eyes. while The best part of wake. I know he closed his eyes because you can, you could really get into that, but you got to close your eyes when you get into that Folgers theme song. Best part of, anyway, so this seasonal delight spices has got a fantastic aroma smell to it. You could really smell that joint. Now, when my black ass grabbed it, did my little thing to it, hooked it up with the little sauces I be putting up in that hoe. Yeah, I talk a little black sometimes. I put my little sauces up in that hoe. And that shit, that shit hit. And that and it made me feel like St. Nick. Ah, you see the rhyme? That shit hit it. It made me feel like St. Nick. I was in this bitch like, ho, 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 ho. Yeah, man. That was that one was fire. And then they had Fat Festa Black Double Espresso. Festa. Fe- Why am I saying Festa? Festa? Festive Black Double Espresso. Now you know. That's actually what I'm sipping on right now. It's probably why I'm wired, you know. When you sip, when you sip that festive black double espresso, I have to imagine you make it's like how how you know Clint Eastwood or John Wayne felt when they'd walk into the, to the bar in a western, and the bartender slams down a, a fucking glass. Boom! Here to pour, and that shit inside that cup would set a forest on fire and John Wayne or Clint Eastwood pick that joint up, hit that some bitch. Yeah. That's how that festive black double espresso is. That, yeah. But it's good. Fantastic. If you're a coffee person like me, head over to an espresso, pick that up. That's my shit. Now, listen, last night I'm chilling, right? <clears throat> me and the lady, we're chilling. Me and the lady, we're chilling. We like to, you know, chill. We're calm people. We're calm. We're cool. We're hip. And we calm, though. So we like to watch a movie. So I put on uh, this movie, Dumb Money. And now I'm going to take you back. I'm about to take y'all back. All right. Dumb Money. It's a newer movie uh, based off a true event. You know, uh, the story of GameStop's unexpected rise featuring Keith Gill, portrayal by the actor known for playing the Riddler. Yeah, when you when you get into my comic book movies, listen, it's important. When you get into my comic book movies, my comic book movies, when you get into my DCs, when you get into my Marvels, you become that person. You understand what I'm saying? You become that person. You don't, you no longer have a government name, you become the character. So Keith Gill, who was the guy that predicted the rise of GameStop, who put 50K into GameStop before anybody did, he's played by the Riddler. Now, listen, this guy is a fantastic actor. And he, he's he's a great actor, but he's known as the Riddler to me, and I feel bad for that. And I walk up to him in person in Hollywood. Maybe I see him in Hollywood. You know, maybe I catch him at this. Maybe I catch him at a GameStop. How do, how it happens? I don't know. The magic of of the world can make it happen. Where I just walk into a GameStop and I'm like, oh shit, the Riddler. He's gonna look at me. I don't know how he's gonna feel about it, but it's a possibility that he's like. Brodden did so much work. How are you calling me the Riddler? But you're the Riddler to me now. And if you don't, you haven't seen uh, Matt Reeves' Batman, you're missing out because he was a great bad guy. 
the Riddler. He plays Keith Gill, the guy that put 50K up for GameStop, right? That is some, that's some gangster shit. That's some gangster shit. That's a motherfucker who know what he doing, right? You know, we you got a lot of things that are gangster, you know? Going to a bad part of the neighborhood and getting gas at one o'clock in the morning, that's gangster. You know what I'm saying? That's gangster. You know, walking in the Whole Foods, walking, <laughs> walking into Whole Foods with an EBT card, that's gangster. You know what I'm saying? Getting getting government assistance, but you like the fighter. <laughs> you like the fighter things. <laughs> you, you like you like the finer foods. Walking in the Whole Foods with the EBT card is pretty gangster. I can't even. That's gangster. I can't even lie to you. Him taking fifty k of his family's money and and putting putting into GameStop. I know y'all remember that when it was to the moon. I seen it everywhere to the moon. AMC was in there a little bit to the moon. That's so cool, man. Dude knew what he was doing. Put 50K in there. People thought he was nuts, except for his wife. What does it mean when you have a supporting girlfriend or a wife? What does that do for you? It puts you in a Bonnie and Clyde mode. You you and her against the world. Support? She she supported him. Because... When you listen, 50 K when you just, you know what I'm saying? You go down to Vegas, say you in Vegas and you got the duckies, but you seven days pass on that rent. You got about two grand. You put it on the table. You look up, you up 20, 20 K. And you say, you know what? I'm going to put it all in. If your wife is there for that, most wives that are there watching you as you put the last two K y'all had up and rent is 3,200 or the mortgage will be nice. Say, the mortgage 3,200 and she's standing right behind you to the side of you, to the left or to the right. You could choose. She's standing right there and you put, and you up 20 K and you say, I'm going all in again. She liable to start choking your ass. <laughs> And tell the and tell the dealer no the fuck he ain't he's no longer in cash that motherfucker out I'm gonna finish choking him and y'all put the chips over here cause what the fuck especially if you don't understand can't nobody come to me you know I gotta have full faith and you come to me and say hey man I want five hundred dollars man I'm gonna put it in on this bet I'm gonna put it on the, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm going to put it on Anthony Davis to hit five threes tonight. Give me 500. I know it's going to hit. No, you the fuck you're not. You're not. I'm not giving you 500 for Anthony Davis to hit five threes tonight. Man, I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about. I'm telling you, AD got it in him tonight. He playing somebody that's undersized. He playing an undersized center tonight, you know, and he going to be wanting to shoot. He been hitting his threes. He's shooting 75% on his threes this year. Give me the 500. No, I'm not giving you 500. You know what I'm saying? But that motherfucker, somebody, you know, you get enough of a compelling argument. I'm like, all right. Here's the five. Just know, if you lose the five, that's your ass. I got I to gotta get it back somehow. So I got to whoop some ass. But he was putting 50K up, 50K on stocks. He knew what he was doing. His wife supported him. His friend thought he was crazy at first that he found out this motherfucker's a genius. This motherfucker started a movement. Everybody was putting putting money into to, to, to GameStop stock. <coughs> <coughs> I'm a real motherfucker. I'm going to leave that in. Let me get a little sip real quick. So he put, this, he put the money in. And then Seth Rogen's in it. He plays Gabe Plot Plotkin? Gabe Plotkin? Gabe Plotkin? 
I think he was uh, the head of Melvin something, some financial company. And he was the head of, you know, Seth, Seth is my guy. Seth is my guy. I'm not going to lie to you. Seth, if I'm at the crib and he wants to come over, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm at the, I'm at the crib making vegan sausages and, and eggs. You want some, bro? And I'm going to make it for him because he's, he's, he's my guy. That's my guy. But I guess his company was basically betting on GameStop to freaking fail. It didn't fail because you know why? Keith Gill set the, set the internet ablaze and everybody was putting money. And this was 2021. So when you, when you go viral, you go viral with some shit. It was on TikTok. Everybody was putting money in. And then my guy, my other guy in there, Winter Soldier, I told you, Winter Soldier, he's got a name. He's got a movie I like called Fresh. He's a fucking murderer. I shouldn't have told you that. Winter Soldier, he's in it. I know. I, you heard what I said. If you are in a comic book or Marvel movie, the DC or Marvel movie, you are that person. Now, you no longer have a real government name. But he plays a character called Vlad T because I don't know the dude's last name. I couldn't say it, so I just put Vlad T. But he was the owner of uh, him and his boy owned Robin Hood. You know, they was crooked. Some crooked shit going on. A lot of crooked shit, but the movie's fantastic. The movie is fantastic. You know, you can, it, it hypes you up to kind of understand investing. Like, damn, do I want to understand this shit? It's kind of cool. And I remember putting money in AMC stock in Robin Hood. I remember doing it. I remember putting money in GameStop stock. Now, I couldn't, you know, listen. So, dude put 50K in, got up to like 46 mil. He told his family when he was at 23 mil that he had 23 mil. He made 23 mil. His pop looked at him like he was crazy because he didn't want to pull out. His brother thought he was crazy. His mother thought he was crazy. I was at home in my recliner and I thought he was a psychopath. I was like, I don't know how this story ends, but I hope he don't lose that money because I'm putting myself in his shoes and I was probably out of there by 1.5 mil. <laughs> I was out of there by 1.5. You know what I'm saying? I was I was 1.5 and I had a suit and tie and I was buying real estate by that time. My folks were still making bread. I, and I didn't understand. I'm like, man, you put that type of money in. I'm like, what? You had 46 mil. You can't pull 25 out and leave the rest in. Nobody said anything about that in this movie. I'm like, you can't pull out 27 mil and then leave the rest in. I was really curious about that. Nobody answered my question. I'm assuming you can, but you ain't got to pull it all out, do you? But the nigga was gangster. Everybody thought he was crazy, but he was gangster. Left it in for 46. 46, oh shit. And everybody was following him. Everybody was following him. We not pulling. We holding the line, diamond hands. We holding the line, diamond hands. When you watch the movie, you know what I'm talking about. If you if you were hot on the social media, you know what I'm talking about. It's crazy, man, how you can get sucked into to social media and you can get in the movement. You can get on it. It's cool and it's crazy. It's wild. It's fun. But that was dope. 46 mil. Then he had to go. I, let me not tell you the movie. I, 46 mil. I'm not going to. Spoil alert. I'm not saying nothing else. Damn. My bad. Listen. Shit. I ain't telling you a lot. It happened in real life. You was probably around when it was going on. I, it's just more detail. I'm not going to say no more. Y'all ain't got a trip. I ain't going to be busting up no more. I ain't going to say no more. But the movie is fire. The movie is fire. You gotta go watch it. There's another one called um, No Exit on Hulu. I think I'm a little, I was a little bit behind on that, but I just watched it too. That shit was fire too, but Dumb Money, fantastic. No Exit, fantastic. Go watch it. Please hurry, do it. Oh, will I be able to... Oh, let me see real quick. Y'all just stay with me here real quick. I don't think I'm going to be able to. Oh, I fucked it up. 
Oh, I fucked it up. Ooh. Oh, well. I was going to play this clip. I, you know what I'm going to try to do? So this this is how cold this is how cold I am when it comes to talking to y'all. I don't even care. I'm just being real with y'all. So here we go. I'm going to play this clip real quick. And I'm going to play it through the microphone. But you'll hear me explain it to you. So I'm going to play the clip through my microphone. And then I'm going to put the actual clip. I'm then I'm going to put the actual clip into there. And then you'd be like, oh, his name's Cole. He told us what he's going to do. Then he did it. That motherfucker cold. Okay, let me see if I can make this happen. Here we go. Chance to buy a house, etc., etc. Uh, uh, escrow is going to close. Uh, yeah, ho- hold on. Let me let me restart it because I'm a cold motherfucker. Hold on. Let me see. Let me bring it back. And then you go, bam. Let's do- Sit over there. I'll deal with this. I explain to Red. Chance to buy a house, etc., etc. And uh, uh, escrow is going to close uh, in four days. I'm thirty five hundred dollars short, and uh, I'll work it off. I'll pay you back any way I can, etc. So he said, thirty five hundred dollars. Ain't got no small change on me right now, but uh, calls his secretary over with a thumb snap. He says, "Bring me my checkbook." So he's writing a check, Pat Morita, $3,500. And as he's writing, before he signs his name, he says, now look here, I don't want to hear about no papers, no payback, no interest, no IOU, no nothing. So you want to pay me back? I know you're going to make it one day, son. You do this for somebody. Never forgot it. I've done it. Fortunately, I got to that place he predicted I was going to get to and uh, have helped a few people under the same conditions. Now, again, y'all couldn't hear it that well, but I'll put it in there and you will hear it fantastic. Well, y'all couldn't hear it right now that well, but I'll put it in. You'll be like, oh, that's what he did. I appreciate you explaining that because you was a bad motherfucker. But the clip is Pat Morita. Now, if you don't know who Pat Morita is, rest in peace, my guy. That's Mr. Miyagi. The famous Mr. Miyagi from Karate Kid. By the way, that movie meant a lot to me as a young person growing up in the mean streets of Kansas City because I thought I could learn karate. And then I realized, nah, you got to have a dynamite, right? Move a little bit. No. But yeah, I wish I could have learned karate when I was younger. But that's Mr. Miyagi talking. And he's talking about the, you know, Pat, Mar- Pat Morita is a comedian. He was a comedian first. Then he got the role of Mr. Miyagi. He was a comedian. Still, a, he was even after Karate Kid, because he did three of them things, four of them things, f- four of them things, and Jackie Chan took over. You, you know, we ain't going to talk about that. Karate. <laughs> we ain't gonna know about that. But Pat Morita was a comedian. Red Fox, we you you got to know about Red Fox. Red Fox is a famous, 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 legendary comedian. Sanford and Sons. Famous TV show back in the day. And I don't know when he gave him that 3500 I don't know when he did it. But let me tell you something. When he did it, 3500 you ask somebody for 3500 you can get frowned upon. I don't give a fuck how much money you had because whenever the time he wrote the check had to be in the 80s, I'm assuming, mid-80s, maybe early 80s, maybe even the 70s. I'm not for sure. But whenever he wrote that check, he sounded cool about writing the check, but that check was legit. That's That money hurt. That's 3500 <laughs> And you go look up how much he got paid for Sanford and Sons and it's not a lot of money and I'm sure the back end residuals is not a lot of money so 35 hundo that's a real friend and I never knew that they who would have thought that Mr. Miyagi and Red Fox were friends not my dog sleep in the background Winston hey Winston and he gonna wake up like he got an attitude but he back there doing that dreaming shit you know what I'm saying he doing that dreaming shit, man. I got to wake him up sometimes. He be knocked out 
running and, and jumping over hills and fields. And we live downtown. We ain't got that shit, nigga. Wake up. Anyway, but they're friends. And I never, who would have thought that Red Fox and Pat Morita were friends? And that Red Fox loaned him money to get his house. It's just some dope shit to fucking find out. Understand again, 3500 whenever he cut that check, it stung. As nice as he was being, tore that check up, tore that check off and gave it to him and said, I know I told him I, I didn't want it back, but show wish, show hope, he give it back. <laughs> Yo, that is one of the cooler videos I found. And I watch, I'm on the internet all the time. So it's one of the cooler videos that I've come across to to find out those two were friends. And um, when you get the opportunity, like I've done some pay it forward type stuff. I've done some things where I'm in line at the Starbucks and I pay for the person's stuff behind me. And fortunately, I've been, you know, I've I've been lucky not to have been hit with a real, with a real debt, like a real, Hey, person behind you got $45 worth of drinks. Well, what about the car behind him? You know, cause that's what I'm going to say. $45 worth of coffee. What about the car behind him? Six. I'll do the $6 one. What do you get a biscuit? Let me do that one. You know, and then you let that dude behind me pay for his shit. Then tell the dude, behind him that it was the car in front of him of the car that was in, in front of him that paid for his stuff and then pay for the next guy's stuff. But if it's 45 bucks, don't do it. But it's cool when you got friends and you got loved ones. Sometimes, man, you really got to do it out of love. You know what I'm saying? You got to do it out of love so they could do it out of love for the next person and then you spread the positivity and the juices is flowing. And then all of a sudden you get to heaven's gate and they're like, you know what? You did loan that person that money to get that house. So all those hookers that you mistreated did those weird things with you paid for. I'm going to expunge that. I'm going to take that off the record. You're able to get into heaven now just because you were nice in helping people get to where they needed to be. But we remember what you did with those hookers. That shit was foul, man. We had to watch that shit up here. That shit was foul, man. <laughs> we remember what you had to do with the hookers. <laughs> but it's so cool. Do shit out of love. Most of the time, man, you 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 loan money out. You got to look at it like I loaned it out. I ain't expecting to get it back. I ain't fuck with it. Don't even care. They're your peoples. They're your family. They're your friends. Look out. Look out if you can. Don't overdo it. But look out if you can. People tell you they got a total. Man, I need help. I need 1200 That's dope. Okay, you need 1200 I could put something on 1200 mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I could put something on 1200 That's got to count. If you can't get a whole 12 if I could put something on a 12 that can help you reach the end goal, that's got to count, right? But hope does count. You know, anyway. Let me finish up this uh, episode. I have a few minutes left and I want to talk about um, social media SEO. Search engine optimization. Now, I've been learning and under, trying to understand this part of the game. I've been trying to understand it. Now, social media platforms can act like websites and Google and stuff like that where they they, you can use key popular words to be found quicker so these things can help your business out if you're running your stuff through social media platforms and you're building your name up through the social media platforms using keywords trendy words helps people like I was I was put on from example of um you know um in your Instagram bio, if you're a bakery, um, you should include bakery in your at name and in your name name, right? So it should be like uh, Meredith's 
bakery on the south side, motherfucker. So you could put Meredith's Bakery South Side MF. You know what I'm saying? But you got bakery in there. So when people type in bakery, there's a good chance people find you and you put in your name. Same and those those that rule that, that thing I just told you right there also applies to Google. So it helps for you to be found on Google. YouTube is one of the platforms that really that Google really uses. So when you use these keywords and you're trying to, you know, come up with these uh, trendy uh, captions or um, descriptions or title names for your videos or your posts and stuff like that, um, YouTube is a big one that actually like will come up on Google. You know what I'm saying? And I know TikTok and Instagram and, and, and they all show up. But YouTube is like a massive one. So when you're coming up with these captions or you're coming up with these titles, you want to get creative. Think about trendy things that are going on. Search engine optimization. Damn, I sound like I know what I'm talking about. But I'm just hip. I'm just hip to the game. I do my research, man. But I'm just hip to the game. But I've been using that lately. Like I had to go through this morning and something to the uh, interview I did with Beatrice Martinez. I changed some things up. Um, I changed some things up on the gram. I changed some things up on the Facebook, which ugh, yuck, Facebook, right? Um, I've changed some things up on there. Just trying to, uh, um, you know, use, you know, trendy keywords. This website, huh? Let me get to this website. Hold tight, fam. Oh, shit. Did I get past it already? Oh, shit. Okay, there it is. Oh, no, that's not it. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no, I fucked it up. Oh, man. I just... Oh, there it is. <laughs> Real quick. I'll put it... I'll put it down. Uh, no, I won't. Yeah, I'll put it down in the description of this episode so you can get to the link of it. But it's uh, simrush.com simrush.com that's s-e-m-r-u-s-h dot com and they have a keyword magic tool on there and I guess you could just go in there I did it type in some words and they'll give you a bunch of more like popular um, words that were used for that and the more popular title names and all types of stuff so it's really dope to use if you're trying to come up with some keywords and you want to type them in and see what happens see what comes up See if you could flip it. I'm all about flipping shit. I'm all about using somebody as a guideline or somebody's rules as a guideline and then flipping them for what works for me. You know, I live off the media. That's how I make my brizzet. That's how I make my duckies. That's how I'm able to, to afford a nice toilet seat cushion because I mix my duckies off the social media. Damn it. SEO social media. SEO, social media, SEO. We trying to do better at being creative when it comes to your captions, your titles, your descriptions. Everything is about headline grabbing. That's all you see is a bunch of clickbait, right? We got to use the words so people know. So people know that we, <laughs> that we make bridal gowns for dogs. If you make bridal gowns for dogs, I don't even know what to say. But if you do it, you got to use bridal gowns, weddings, something in your title. So people will know what's going on and they get to your page. They see you make bridal gowns for dogs. I'm like, oh, shit, I was going to get one for Sicily, my chariot pit bull. Now people know who you are because you now get creative. Titles, descriptions, captions, SEOs, you're using trendy words to, you know, kind of put inside of there so people can find you easier. I'm always here for you, people. I am here. I am your guy. I am Thaddeus Shade. This is Seasonable Cloud. One more time for the people. Let's go through these. Did I? Oh, you know what? That's X-Men. Sorry. I missed missed it. it. That's Ghostbusters. 
That's Fresh Prince. Man, you come right out of a comic book. Y'all, y'all know I do this. I like to go through these sometimes. Okay. Wait. There was once a black, black, black man who stood taller than the tallest tree in the ghetto. And that tall black man would sing and harmonize it. One day, that tall black man was in front of the liquor store down on 19th Ave. And he had a clarinet. And that tall black man that was down at the liquor store on 19th Avenue that had a clarinet was playing Kenny G. I'm out. Oh, shit. I have been on a Starbucks strike when it comes to tea because these motherfuckers ain't got no honey. And I know about a month ago, I was complaining about these some bitches not having no honey. These some bitches still ain't got no honey. I said it again. These some bitches still ain't got no honey. They ain't got no honey, man. I go there, they ain't never got no honey. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to make my own medicine balls at the house because I don't really drink tea, but I would tear a medicine ball up. I said, I'll make my own tea at the house. So then I go, right? And I'm like, okay, what is a medicine ball, right? I go look and it's, uh, what is that shit? It's like a, it's Tiavana, Tiavana, Tiavana. I don't know, Tijuana. I know that's where you get marijuana. 